Okay, so I've done my basic styling and now I'm going to add my videos. I'm going to add three kinds of videos. I'm going to add a video loop in the header. I'm going to use HTML5 video to do that. We'll do that first. Then I'm going to add just a regular horizontal YouTube video at the bottom. We're going to use embed it responsively to do that. And then I'm going to use um, I'm going to modify the embed tag to put the vertical video into my into my HTML document. Now, um, these are three different ways of using video, but I just want to draw your attention. We're going to go over it here, but I want to draw your attention to the blog. There's uh, a post called The Three Ways of Video in HTML, um, and the first one goes over HTML5 and then how to embed horizontal video with um, embed responsibly and then how to embed vertical videos but we're going to go over it in this video but um, the text for that the text description is on the blog okay so before I begin to embed video I want to show you that I have in the Tika elements folder I have a videos folder. Now the only video I have in here is the loop video. Is the video I'm going to put in HTML5 and that's because my longer videos, the vertical video and the um, video from YouTube, the horizontal video, the one that's kind of like a package, um, uh, they're on YouTube. And they're on YouTube because YouTube is really the best at handling the playback of video on the web. It will optimize video for playback on different devices including mobile devices it'll optimize it for format and for bandwidth so you know YouTube is really the best YouTube or Vimeo uh, really the best solution for using video on the web however YouTube does not do loops well uh, if you have a video loop in YouTube it, it plays and then it stops it comes to a full stop, you get a black screen, and then it goes back. So it's, it's not good for loops. So if you have a loop or some other very short video, you can use HTML5 video. And HTML5 video gives you um, a, a lot of control over what you can do with it. Okay, so the other thing about HTML5 video is normal, is if you notice here in the video folders, I have three video files. So here's the thing, they're all the same video. So if I double click this one, this is a move. Ah, it's the bubbling vat of chicken tikka. Okay, so that's a move format. If I double click the MP4, oh, it's the same video. It's the bubbling vat of chicken tikka. Okay, and then WebM, this is kind of a strange video. Let's see what's going to play it. Firefox is going to try to play it. Firefox enjoys its WebM. Um, it's playing the same video. So the reason why we have multiple, why we have the same format in multiple, while we have the same video in multiple formats is because some browsers prefer some formats over others. So for example, Firefox, and I think Chrome also really likes the WebM format. Um, Safari will definitely play a move or an MP4. I think Chrome will probably play an MP4. So what happens is when you have these three formats, um, they, the web browser goes through and if it can't play the move and you have a link to an MP4 file, it'll play the MP4. And if it can't play that and you have a link to a WebM, it will play the WebM. Okay. So the two that I would be encourage you to have uh, for your video files, uh, for your video tags, would be the MP4 and the WebM. WebM is kind of a funny format, and what you can do with WebM, um, so, so let me backtrack a little bit. MP4, if you export a video out of Premiere, it's in a format, it comes out with the um, extension M4V. M4V is MP4. So if you have an M4V video, you can you can use uh, you can call it uh, in the in the text you can say it's text equal MP4. Um, but you can't export WebM from Premiere. So what I do, I'm going to show you 
and actually there's a link in here. There's a link to a site right here. This is called Video Online Convert to WebM. If I click that, what you can do is choose a file. Okay, let's say I didn't, um, let's say I, I had not already created my WebM file. So if I go in here to Videos and I choose my Move, let's say, it will automatically convert my Move file to a WebM. So if I click Start, it's going to upload it. And it doesn't take very long. It takes maybe a minute or two. But it will convert it. It will um, let you know when it's available for download. It will actually, if you keep the window open, it will just automatically download it into your um, computer. So I'm going to leave this open. We'll see the WebM come back when it's, uh, when it's cooked. OK, so anyhow, when you use HTML5 video, uh, you want to use at least the MP4 and the WebM formats. OK, so let's see how we put this into Dreamweaver. Oh, did I lose my thing? Yes, OK. OK, so here's our file. So I'm going to put that video here in the header. And to do that, I'm going to use the video tag. So to start, I'm just going to put the video tag in like that. So the video tag has uh, a close tag. And the kind of funny thing about the video tag is that you put the link to the videos in between the video tags. So this is how we do it. Inside of the video tag, I'm going to open a new tag called source. And then I'm going to say src equals. And this is asking for a video file. So I'm going to go into the videos. I'm going to get out the mp4 first. And then I have to say type equals quote video slash oh, my webm is done. Okay, so so I'm sorry. We were interrupted because my webm video file has finished um, has finished cooking, and I can save it to my desktop. Okay, I've already got it, so I'm not going to worry about it. But that's just to show you. If you go to that site, it will create the webm for you. Okay, so here we go. So we added a link to the MP4 video. It says type video. Um, slash mp4, oops, sorry, mp4, and then, uh, yeah, that's it. Okay, then we're going to do the same thing for the WebM. We're going to say source, src equals quote. Now we're going to go to where the WebM file is. There it is. Type equals quote video slash WebM. Okay, and then we are we already have a move, so we might as well add that. Source equal videos, and this one is oops, I think it's just oh, sorry, I got ahead of myself. Source equals videos. Here we go. This one type equal quote video slash mov. Okay. So now we have the links to the video inside of the video tag. Let's see what happens if we try to preview this. It's not going to quite work yet, but we should see something. Oh, look at that. OK, we have a giant still image there. OK, all right, we're getting there. We're getting there. OK. OK, now we're going to say, um, we're going to do a couple things here. Um, first of all, inside the video tag, I'm going to set the width to 100% in the CSS so that we don't get a giant video. So in the CSS, we have the video tag inside of the header. So I'm just going to go ahead and add video. And I'm going to say width, sorry width 100%. Now that should make it 100% of the header which is inside the main. 
which is 80% of the entire background. So let's see if that reigns in our video file. Okay, yes, now it's behaving. See how even though um, before it was a giant and went outside of its boundaries, now it's fitting nicely inside of its boundaries because I set it to a width of 100%. That means 100% of its container. Okay, but it's not moving. There's no video. We have to change that. For those kinds of attributes, we're going to change the video tag itself. We don't change it in the CSS. We actually change it inside the HTML. Let me show you how that works. So here, inside the video tag, this is where we tell it how we want the video to play. So the first thing we're going to say is loop. And that's going to say play the video in a loop. Now the next thing we're going to say, um, I'm going to try this first, we're going to say muted. That's going to make it play without the sound. Now I might want it to play with the sound, but I'm going to start with muted because I want it to auto play. And that means it's going to play when the page loads. And the issue here is this. If you want this thing to autoplay, you have to put it on mute. Both Chrome and Safari got sick of autoplaying videos suddenly shouting at users. So if you have a video loop that you want to put on autoplay, you need to put it on mute. Muted means make it mute. If I take the muted out, it won't, it won't be muted. There's one workaround here that I'll show you. All right, let me try. Oh, I have to do it this way. I'm going to do the real-time preview. We should see it playing when it loads. Oh, it's bubbling. See how it's bubbling? All right, it's going to loop. Bubble, bubble. It's about 10 seconds. Bubble, bubble. Bubble, bubble, bubble. Yeah, there we go. We see the loop. Okay, now there are ways to make a smoother loop. You can actually Google how to make a smooth loop. I have that jump, you know, between the two shots at the beginning and the end. Um, I don't have time to deal with it right now, so I'm just going to put it this way. Okay, uh, let's, we can add controls. Okay, controls does exactly what you think it does. Yeah, it doesn't want a real-time preview for me. Here we go. Okay, so now we see the controls. We can turn the audio on. Hear the juicy bubbling. Okay, uh, sometimes if I take muted out, it will still autoplay for me. Yes, it will. As long as you have the controls, sometimes it will, it will autoplay um, without muted. You have to kind of play with it. But you're going to need, if you want to hear the sound, you're either going, or if you want to auto play, you're going to either have to loop, I'm sorry, you're either going to have to put muted on, or you're going to have to show the controls. All right, so I'm just going to put the controls. So that's pretty much how it works. Oh, there's one last thing I'm going to add. So sometimes, even though you have these multiple formats of video, Sometimes the browser still can't play your video. This happens a lot, especially on mobile devices. So what you want to put there instead is a picture. So I have a picture. Let me show you where it is. It's in here, inside images. And I think I called it poster. It's basically a still image. Here it is. It's a still image of our video. And it's about the same size of our video. Actually, it's a little more square. Okay, but what it should do, what I can do is I can set this image to play if for some reason the browser cannot play the video. This is how I do it. Here again in the video tag, I usually put this at the end. The um, word here is poster equals quote, and then you're gonna um, link it to the image. So it's called poster, there, is it. there it is, okay. So now, um, if for some reason the browser can't play my videos or it doesn't show up on a mobile device, my users will still see a beautiful image of the bubbling pot, although there will be no video. And that's pretty much the HTML5 video. Um, the, one, the other thing you want to be careful of is you want to make sure, obviously, 
that you, um, if you're using HTML5 video, oh yeah, there's the picture. All right, where's our video? There we go. Um, oh, I see, I have a whole bunch of these windows open. That's what the problem is. Um, if you're using HTML5 video, that you have all of your different um, videos in the folder and that you upload it to the web server. Oh, there is one more thing we're going to do. So notice how our title is down here below the video. What I would really like to do is I'd like to put the title on top of the video. So to do that, I have to think about this a little bit. So both the video and the title, Chicken Tikka Corona, they're in the header. Uh, Chicken Tikka Corona has a P around it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, I'm going to assign it a um, uh, uh, property called Absolute Positioning, which will allow me to give um, coordinates to the placement of this. Now I do, it's kind of a two-step process, I'll show you how it works, but, but basically what I do is I'm going to use the P inside the header, so I'm going to use header P, and I'm going to say position absolute, which means I'm going to give it coordinates, and then I'm going to give it a top and a left, and I'm going to give it percentage. And we'll see where it ends up, because there's one other thing that we have to do to put it where we want it to go. Okay, I'm going to close this because I think it's using up a lot of um, processing power. So, okay, here we go. Here's the P, Chicken Tikka Corona, inside the header. What I want is I want this text to appear on top of the video. I can make that happen. So in the CSS, I'm going to reference this. I'm going to call it header P, header space P. It means any P inside the header. There's only one P inside the header, and that's this. So let me show you how that's going to work. Okay, so I'm in the CSS and I'm going to add header P. Whoop, sorry. So header P means header space P. This means any P inside the header tag, there's only one. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say the property is position. I always misspell this. And the value is absolute. Absolute. There we go. Um, and that means I'm going to give it coordinates. And it wants two coordinates. It wants basically a top and a left, or a bottom and a left, or a top and a right, or a bottom and a right. So just to see how this works, I'm going to say top, zero, left, zero. And it's going to show us a couple things because the way um, absolute positioning works in CSS is um, everything is on a coordinate system and the upper left hand corner is 0, 0 uh, and it gets positive as you go right and down. Um, now you can enter negative numbers uh, but we'll see how this works because I said header P, position absolute, top 0, left 0, let's see where this ends up. So I'm going to do my real time preview Okay. Oh, look. So it's kind of working, uh, but look, it's on the it's it's at zero zero. Uh, it's at zero zero. It's not inside of my, but it's not inside of my header, which is really weird. Why is it not inside my header? Well, it's not inside my header because I used absolute positioning. Whenever I use absolute positioning, it takes it out of what's called normal document flow, and basically. What it's looking for is it's trying to figure out what it needs to be positioned relative to. So when I said top zero, left zero, what did I mean? I didn't say anything. I didn't specify what it should be positioned relative to. So if that's the case, then it's going to position itself relative to the browser window. So this is top zero, left zero as far as the browser window is concerned. Um, so what I need to do is I need to tell it, wait a minute, I want you to position yourself relative to the header. I want this to be positioned within the header. And to do that, I actually have to set the header itself. I have to give it a, a property called position relative. And that means anything that has position absolute that's inside of me gets positioned relative to me. It's a little tricky, but that's how it works. 
So what I'm going to do in the CSS is I'm going to set the header to position relative. And then, because header P is inside of it, when header P says position absolute, it's going to be positioned relative to the header. Okay, so let me go do that. I'm going to the CSS. So here's the header. I'm just going to add this position relative. Okay, let's see what that looks like. Actually, I can probably just go there. Oh, look! Chicken Tikka Corona is now obediently within the header. That's exactly what I want. Okay, but now let's say what I would like it to be. I'd like it to be down here in the lower um, left-hand corner. So I'm going to set um, my top and my left. Actually, I'm going to do right and left. I'm going to set the right. I'm going to set the left to about 5%. Actually, I'm going to do left bottom. And I'm going to do bottom 5%. That'll set this text 5% from the edge of the header and 5% up from the bottom. Okay, so here we are. Where's header P? There it is. So I'm going to say top. Actually, I'm going to do bottom this time. I'm going to say bottom 5%. I'm going to say left 5%. Okay, and that's going to change the position. There it is, very nice. Okay, that's about where I want it. Um, I might want to change the color of Chicken Tikka Corona because it's hard to read. Um, I'm going to use this background color in the article. It's kind of an off-white. I'm going to use that to change the color of the words Chicken Tikka Corona. So I'm just going to go to the article. I'm going to grab this color. And since I'm changing the color of the type, just color. Okay, let's see what that looks like. Oh, very nice. And if I want to make this semi-transparent, I can use RGBA for this color any, uh, instead. Okay, now that we have started, um, now that we have mastered HTML5 video, we're going to go and we're going to add YouTube videos to our page. First, I'm going to do the easy thing. I'm going to add a regular horizontal YouTube video at the bottom of the page. Um, and all I have to do is use embed responsively. And it will act perfectly. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a vertical video up in the upper right hand corner of the article. Um, and I have to do a couple other little things to make that work. But first, I'm going to get a regular horizontal video from YouTube. So. I'm going to plant this video. This is not my video. Obviously, if you're going to use a video package, you should use your video. But I'm going to use this video. This is the video I used for my recipe. And to um, add it to my HTML, what I'm going to do, I'm going to click the share button. And I'm going to just copy the link. I'm going to ignore all this stuff up here. I'm going to copy the link. So I'm going to click the copy. Then I'm going to go to this amazing site called Embed Responsively. Embed Responsively. And Embed Responsively is like this magical site where if you enter a URL from YouTube or Vimeo or Google Maps or Twitter or SoundCloud or a bunch of other things, it will automatically generate code for you where you can embed it into your HTML and it will be perfectly responsive. It will scale to fit any device. So I'm going to paste my YouTube URL. Remember I just got the URL, the sharing URL. And I'm going to click embed. And if everything works properly, I should see my video here. And then at the bottom it says embed code. And the thing to remember about this embed code is that it comes in two parts, even though they put it all in one, one area here. So I'm going to hit return so you can see what the two parts are. The top part is the style. This goes in the CSS. The bottom part is div class equal embed container. It contains an iframe with a link to the YouTube. That part goes into the HTML. So let's grab this part. This goes into the HTML. I'm going to copy it. 
means I'm going to put it into my article, into my HTML where I want it to appear. So I'm going to copy this. I'm going to go back to my HTML. And I'm going to put this at the bottom. So I'm going to put it at the bottom of the article. So after the last paragraph, but before the close article, I'm going to paste what I got from embed responsibly. And this is just the area from div to close div. That's what goes into the HTML. So you see here it starts off div and it ends in closed div. That part goes into the HTML. Now I'm going to go get the other part and stick it into the CSS. So I'm going to go back to embed responsibly. And so all this stuff up here, this goes into the CSS, except you do not want the style tag. You want everything inside of the style tag. So everything from, <coughs> excuse me, everything from dot embed container, this means embed container is a class, all the way to the close um, curly brace. You do not want the style tags. So I'm going to copy this. I'm going to go to my CSS. Uh, I'm going to go down maybe between the article and the footer and I'm going to paste this. This is actually two classes. There's two different styles. There's the class embed container and we're going to just leave everything that is in here, you just leave it alone. Um, this one says any iframe inside of a bed container, any object inside of an embed container, any embed inside of an embed container. Don't worry about it, just leave it absolutely alone. Okay, so between this and this, now I'm getting a red letter because it doesn't like the fact that embed container or that embed responsibly uses single quotes instead of double quotes, but that's okay, it'll work anyhow. So if I preview this, oh my goodness, there's my video, and I can play it. And no matter, no matter how I squeeze this, it's going to embed responsibly, which is a beautiful thing. Notice our HTML video has also um, become very responsive, which is a lovely thing. Okay, so if you have a horizontal video, that's all you need to do is you need to go to embed responsibly. And um, if you want to learn how to do this uh, beyond this video, I put it on the blog uh, with the URL and the steps and the piece, different pieces highlighted. So um, remember, the div goes into the HTML and the style part goes into the CSS minus the style tags. Okay, that was easy. All right, so next we're going to take, um, here we go. We're gonna take a vertical video and we're going to put it into our HTML. And to do that, it's just a little bit different. So here's my vertical movie right here. So as you can see, YouTube still wants to play it mostly as a horizontal movie. You know, the, the, the ears, the left and right sides are transparent, but um, it's still pretty much horizontal. So that's okay, because I can actually take this and make it a vertical movie inside of my HTML. So I'm going to do something similar. This is the video I want to put in. I'm going to go back to the share button again, and this time, instead of just copying the link, I'm going to go to embed. Okay. So it's going to give me all of the stuff inside of an iframe. I'm just going to copy it. And I'm going to bring it into my HTML. Now I happen to know I want this kind of at the top of my video, so the top of my page. I'm just going to paste it right in here. Okay. So let's see what happens if we just preview this the way it is now. So let me go here. Let me reload. Okay, so you can see right now my vertical movie is actually a horizontal movie, which is not what I want. I want it to be a horizontal movie. Well, let me show you how you fix that. If I look carefully at what I brought over, I can see that um, YouTube has associated a width and a height to my video. Now, as you know, I usually say take the width and the height out. This time, I'm not going to say it. 
What I'm going to do instead is notice that the width is much wider than the height is tall. We're actually just going to transpose these numbers. So right now it's width 560 and height 315. We're going to make it height 315 and width. Width 315 and height 560. Okay, then we're going to take a look at it. And just by doing that, that should fix our problem. So I'm going to reload. Oh my goodness, now I have a vertical video. Isn't that beautiful? It is a beautiful thing. And as with any kind of element inside of my HTML, I want my text to come and wrap up around beside it. So what I can do is in my CSS, I can set a float left or a float right to the vertical video. So let me look. So this came in with iframe. And I want to be a little bit careful with that because I have an iframe in here. Um, so what I can do is I might actually, well, let's see what happens if I use iframe. This iframe, sorry, this iframe is inside of a class called embed container. So, and I have a style that I brought over from um, embed responsively that says embed container iframe. So actually that should be okay. So if I just say iframe, it should just apply here, but we'll see. So I'm gonna go into here and I'm gonna go before this one. I'm just gonna go iframe and I'm just gonna say float left. Okay, let's see what it looks like. Okay, so now this is floating left and this is left alone, very nice. So now I'm gonna also, I want this text to move away from the edge of this video. So I'm gonna set margin right to about 1%. So I'm gonna say margin right. 1%. Oops, sorry. Okay, and that should move the text away from the edge. There it is. Okay, so pretty good. So yeah, this thing has stopped auto-playing, I think because I didn't turn the mute off, but it's all right. Okay, so that's how I added my vertical video. So for the vertical video, I went to YouTube and I got the embed code and I just transposed the width and the height okay and that made it vertical for the regular horizontal video I used embed responsively and embed responsively just takes care of it